It was early spring. It was raining. The villain Gabriella, that's what got her killed. She died. A man came up to her and told her to live. He wanted the mistress to live, even if they would not be together. That's why the young man would pretend as if he didn't know anything. Here would be the sun shining today. But then why is Mademoiselle now? If the sun were shining, Madame's face would not seem so sad. Ernst Kassel Eckes, the one who ruled the forces of the night, the leader guiding his loyal mighty army, and husband of the holy villain Gabriella. It all started with the treaty, the short story March for the True Saint. The girl found herself in the villain's body, and as soon as she realized it, she started desperately trying to remember the plot. The Count had an illegitimate daughter named Gabriella. She lived like an angel. But in the real story, the lady, on the contrary, only blamed and tormented, and finally faced death. No, no, Madame wanted to live. She didn't want to die. Milady had read about her before the rebirth. The author's announcement suddenly popped into her mind. She wrote that she was creating a story about a sham marriage and a cold man from the North Sea. If this man was from the North Sea, then it was about Duke Ernst. He is the protagonist of the next story. The story was still unfinished. Maybe the plot could still change. So, is it bad to be the protagonist? But is it fashionable to be happy in the body of a Gabriella villain? My lady thought so. His Highness was informed that the runaway coachman had been caught. He confessed to damaging a carriage wheel. He carries the banner of the day on his back. The first prince must have been behind it. The protagonist ordered his hand to be chopped off, and we had to find out who was behind it. And then he had to chop off both his legs and make him crawl for the rest of his life. It was the first time Madame had seen her husband so intimidating. Even though it was a sham marriage, the Duke had always been very kind to his wife. First, according to the contract, they had to do for three years that they loved each other. Secondly, they were forbidden to fall in love for real. Third, after the divorce, the young people would not be together. Despite these conditions, the three years of marriage were happy. Mademoiselle was afraid of accidentally revealing her feelings and worried a lot. The girl wanted to give her spouse it until the end of the actions of the treaty so that he would no longer have to bow to the royal family. But Madame never thought she would just die like that. But my Lady Sosren, a family heirloom that a man had given her as a wedding gift, a valuable treasure of the ex family that can't be burned. The protagonist will not let it fall into the hands of the royal family. The lady wanted to say something to her consort, but he replied that no words were needed. She had a ring, and his highness's whole body was burning. He must take care of his health. Ernst. Mademoiselle was sorry to leave him with such terrible memories, but she was glad that the duke had come to check on her and not let her die alone. Madame hoped they would meet in the next life. The girl was asked if she was listening. Uh, what? Actually, the main character was supposed to die in an accident. Is that the Lord of the Great Hall? Why was my lady there? She's deceased. Why were the forces of day and night gathered in one place? Are they reunited? What has happened? The man said that today they were officially concluding the marriage between Duke X and the princess. Her Highness the Princess would be traveling north in three days. This man was talking about Mr. X. It turns out the husband of the lady, between him and the princess, a marriage had now been arranged? What the hell is this? How did this happen? Mademoiselle's heart felt like it was about to be torn apart, a disgrace to the royal family, a stain on the noble son, a delirious princess. Madame Fiona is sodium. It's not true, it just couldn't be. Has the villain become her majesty? The man said that if there were no objections, then the signing could proceed. His Highness was informed that it was necessary to sign the contract. They asked Mr. X to also leave his signature. Yes, the protagonist realized that her husband was sitting in front of her. His face became even darker. He seemed completely cold. The lady was given her wedding vows with the date of April 6th, the year 826. It was six years since the death of the villainous Gabriella. It was exactly six years since the death of the protagonist. And strange as it may seem, Mademoiselle in another guise became this man's wife again. But the man hated her. After all, he was married to the king's daughter. Maybe we should tell the young man that his ex-wife was sitting in front of him before she died. The villain begged to see her again, and there she was. Milady couldn't tell, and she couldn't write either. But why? How was it possible to give a sign to this man? It was like some kind of spell. 
Now the mistress would have to be in Fiona's body? She was a princess and the duke's nemesis. The kingdom, it had long been divided by two forces. Powers of the day, they represented the affluent South, loyal to the royal family. These forces simply loved art, culture, and horseback riding. The forces of night also adored art, culture, and horseback riding, and were spread across the desert north. They were united and acted under the orders of the Grand Duke. The two forces had completely different lifestyles, cultures, and religions, and there was simply no reason to marry. Why was this sham marriage even necessary? Madame looked at herself and thought to herself that this was the dress in which she would spend the next three days after leaving the palace. The king suddenly insisted on uniting the two forces. It was actually a good deal, especially for the North. Ernst, the protagonist, saw his face after a long separation. But the expression on the man's face was terribly cold. It seems that the protagonist was not happy about this marriage. But he should have forgotten his ex-wife Gabriella by now. Will His Highness remember the villain forever? No, this is no time for sadness. Mister was so cold to Fiona, not because of his ex-wife. It's just that Monsieur has hated the royal family since he was a child. So, Mademoiselle hoped that Ernst's facial expression and cold gaze was not because of his former consort. Mistress was very sorry. Even if Mistress didn't want this marriage, my lady was glad that they had met again. Perhaps she was just being selfish. The madam hoped that her spouse ate well without her. Before, the protagonist often forgot to eat because of work. Maybe he won't even be able to eat properly at the wedding. It was good that the servants were around. Fiona really missed him. The maid came to see the girl and said that Mademoiselle had lost so much weight that she would have to have her waist measured again. To be honest, the protagonist did not understand how they could talk to her like that. Thanks to bodily memory, the gentlemen are aware of Lady Fiona's condition. From birth, the princess was abused, even by the maids. Fiona Isodium, she's been ignored since she was a child. The former villain's consciousness had begun to move into her body a week ago, and after a time had finally penetrated it, though the body had been in bed the whole time. But that's just it. No one cared about Madame. She was a disgrace. The rumors were first started, most likely by one of the brothers claiming the throne. They're scoundrels. The lady thought that her highness managed to survive because no one was interested in her, although her foolish brother thought he could kill her at any moment. If the villainess wanted to live, she would have to play the fool. One must be very careful, even though the mistress did not deserve to be treated like that. The girl asked the servants why she was interested in the dress and not in her own life. The maid did not understand what was the matter. Milady replied that she was sorry, but the woman had something waiting for her. The princess said the missus would be dead within the hour. What? What was she talking about? In fact, this maid of honor was very brazen. The pearls represented the bride's departure party, but the maid switched them. If this gets out, the woman will die. The attendant started saying she didn't even know if the stones were real or not. She didn't even do it. Well, mistress ordered her to tie up her dress to make her even more beautiful. Mrs. apologized and asked if Fiona had already told anyone about it. Did she want her highness to tell the other maids? No. She wanted my lady to tell the king that the pearls had strangely disappeared. The maid shouted that she shouldn't do it and it wasn't her doing. So the other maid stole the jewelry? Uh-huh. The protagonist thought that if she ripped out the maid's tongue, she wouldn't even be able to blame it on the other maids. It was their accomplice. Silly girl. You can't change the wedding dress. They thought that even if the princess realized everything, it would be too late to change anything. They figured the lady wouldn't notice if the pearls were stolen. How many times had her highness been used like this? First, you have to ask your brother what the bride looked like. I guess mister will just say that the princess was beautiful without the pearls. The maid asked madame to stay late. Well, who could she blame next? The woman said there was still time and she would return the pearls. Time? How did the maid of honor know they weren't for sale? Ta couldn't answer. She really was very stupid. But Mademoiselle could use even her. Mademoiselle ordered me to kneel. What? I think the missus needs help. She wanted to enlist Fiona's help? Well, in that case, the protagonist will tell her brother that she will marry without the pearls. The maid helped the other maids and shared the jewels with them, didn't she? That needs to be brought to the prince's attention. No, Mrs. started asking to be given another chance. 
Mademoiselle asked why the attendant had her chin up so high. The woman bent down and began to beg for forgiveness. She also asked to be spared. Madame said she would forgive the maid, but only if she was faithful to her. She must escort the princess to Ernest. What? Fiona said she was delighted with the woman. If she didn't want to go, she could go to the prison and bring her friend a maid. She would have to choose between loyalty and imprisonment. The maid chose the former. Her name was Sleepyhead. Now this Sleepyhead will serve Lady Fiona. The protagonist will make sure everyone gets what they deserve. And this was her thanks to the princess for the body. A bouquet of revenge. A couple days later. The man said his heart clenched at the mere thought of his dear sister's departure. It was the first Prince Tudwig Freiken a sodium. His sister didn't have to worry, for the royal guards would escort her to Dalton Harbor. The girl looked at him and did not understand. Did some people really think he was handsome? Personally, Mademoiselle saw only greed on his face. Tudwig is a greedy man with his hands in everything. He's even tried to steal other family's sacred relics. And it was he who ordered Gabrielle's removal. But Miss was supposed to act like Fiona. She can't get emotional. She must keep her mind on the main goal. But Madame still has the consciousness of the great Duchess of Eccles. The young man said that he was regretful that he didn't accompany his little sister to the end, but calmly exhaled when he learned that a third prince would be heading with the madam. They are blood brother and sister, aren't they? The protagonist thought about the fact that her brother never loved her, despite the fact that ensuring proper arrival in the Duchy of Eccles played an important role the lady thought he was just forced into it because he couldn't get a place in the royal palace. This was all said about the third prince, Johannes Mimmel Isodium. The young man had a good height and build. He was only a year older than Fiona. I wondered how long that pink sweet fuzz would last in the northern fleet. The big brother told his little sister not to forget to send her brother news. Milady replied that she would do everything and would never forget her big brother. Oops, she accidentally started speaking in third person. Honestly, Miss just didn't understand what the nasty man was saying. He was telling the lady that it would be great if she always spoke in the third person, and the girl agreed to it. It seems that there are still memories in the body. The first prince must have spread silly rumors about the protagonist. Mademoiselle had goosebumps. He was a pervert. Madame couldn't believe she had to talk about herself in the third person in public. She'd rather drown herself, but she had to hold on. She had other things to do. Milady turned to her brother and said that Fiona wanted to thank him. Yes, she never thought she would marry such an attractive man. Also, she said to look at her beautiful dress. But how come? There were fake pearls in there. Everyone was discussing the fact that the real stones shimmered in the light. Didn't the first prince spend a fortune on his sister's dress? Did he decide to save money on the princess? It's understandable. They're not even blood relatives. The man definitely put a noodle on everyone's ears, saying that he would take care of his sister. Well, the protagonist decided that not only she should be ashamed. Also, can the first prince really be ridiculed so openly? By the way, where's the other prince? But it was for the best that he wasn't there. Previously, Her Highness trembled like a frightened mouse when her second brother appeared nearby. This body only remembered her fears. What would happen to the lady when she faced the second prince? The duke seemed to look at the lady and frown. But did he immediately realize his position? Tudwig turned to the butler and said that he had previously requested that his sister's dress be decorated exclusively with pearls. Mr. replied that he had checked at least five times. It seems that they had been switched already in the palace. Probably the handiwork of the maids. At this point, Fiona turned to her brother and asked if she could take one maid with her. She just didn't like the others. The young man replied that he could probably provide it as a wedding gift. He wished happiness to the princess, and said that if her spouse was bothering her, the lady should send word to him. Master held his sister's shoulders and squeezed them. It was painful, but one must smile, and not show weakness. It's just a game, and the main scene isn't over yet. At this point, the protagonist apologized to his highness and shut the girl down, and afterwards informed her that he would take good care of his wife himself from now on. Everyone started discussing this man. How did he even dare to touch the prince? The young man said that they had a long journey ahead of them and also wished them well. That warm feeling, the duke might have seemed indifferent, but it wasn't. Mr. cared for Fiona. He was the kind of man who didn't care about the formalities of high society. 
He didn't care about anything. But this particular man had manners like no one else. It was as if the protagonist was telling everyone that he would continue to treat his wife with respect. When my lady put her hand on the Lord's arm, it felt like her heart was about to jump out of her chest. It was hard for her to breathe. Mademoiselle thought that after her death, she would never meet her husband again. For the last couple of days, the princess worried that it was just a mirage. The mistress did not think she would be Ernst's wife again. What kind of miracles are these? Mister asked his wife if anything was wrong, though he had no idea that it was Gabriella in front of him. The duke said it was time to move out. The girl thought about the fact that this was not the only carriage, but her consort had decided to ride along with her. The man gave her a hand as Madame sat down. That was very nice of him. The young man had no reason to ride with her in the same carriage, but apparently he wanted to protect the weak princess and make sure she didn't fall into the trap of the first prince. It was impossible not to love a man like that. The carriage pulled away, and Fiona thought about the fact that she was finally free from the clutches of the first prince, and the whole kingdom for that matter. Now my lady could return to her heartland. At last. And also, Mademoiselle was surprised every time she looked at herself in the mirror, as if she were the first. She still could not get used to the new face. Cat-like eyes, rounded eyebrows emphasizing a sharp gaze, smooth porcelain skin and rosy cheeks, emphasizing the youthfulness of a girl of 23. The lady was as beautiful as early fall days. Now it was the face of the protagonist. By the way, would the former villainess be able to act innocent? Gabriella was a villainess, so she acted like a wicked and cunning woman. Suddenly, there were questions regarding Mistress's death. First, who killed her? Ernst has probably already found out. It's quite possible it was the first prince. For it was the second prince. Miss didn't know if he was cunning enough to use such tactics. The first prince was trying to win the battle for the throne. He's very much interested in ancient treasures and artifacts. Considering the fact that the gems were his target, he probably planned the murder of the duke's wife. The second question is, why did Mademoiselle go to the future and not the past, and not in her own body? Shouldn't the girl go back in time and use the knowledge of the future to reunite with her spouse? Didn't the lady swallow the ring? Fiona decided that she would have to find out when she arrived in the duchy. And the third and final question, where was the princess's soul itself? Okay, the only thing that mattered at the moment, she was once again Ernst's wife, and she would not let her die again. They would now live happily ever after. This time, the protagonist must give the ring to her husband. As far as the girl realized from the meeting, the duke obviously hadn't realized anything yet, and even if he did, it didn't change anything. Part of Madame wanted to sit down next to her husband and talk, but Mistress just couldn't say what she Gabriella. What the fuck is this? The main character was very close to the girl, yet so distant. The lady looked out the window and thought about the fact that the spring wind was quite cool. She found herself back in that day again. Smooth waves lapped the seashore. Each step left footprints in the wet sand. It was on that day that the protagonist confessed her feelings to him. The gentleman answered nothing, and this silenced the villain. There was only silence between the young people, peace. For Mademoiselle, there was only her lover and their breathing in unison. Madame missed that time, and now she realized about the need to get rid of the magical shackles and tell her husband that Gabriella had gotten into Fiona's body. Wait, shackles? My lady had heard that somewhere before. It couldn't have just happened. Heavy fetters. I think Madame read about it in Marching in the Name of the True Saint. The main character, Ingrid, was also struck down by the spell. She had role limitations in this world. Yes, the limitations of the role. Her role was sent down by God, and every character had a purpose. If the girl fulfills it in a certain amount of time, the shackles will be removed. Well, the guy said it wasn't that hard, and he could show if it was needed, of course. A book of characters. The girl thought it must have been hard to write a book in a foreign language. Exceptions, that's it. There was a name Ingrid Weibel had a spiritual spell cast on her. Yes, you have to play your part to break it. What? Actually, the man called it the Salpuri Dance. My lady should just know that if she fails, the spell will not be broken. Well, when did that crazy god plan to remove her shackles? When would Miss get to that point? No one knew, but it would be soon, so... Did Miss wish to go with the young man? He wanted to enjoy the view, 
That's how, in order to free herself from the shackles preventing the protagonist from saying she's Gabriella, she needs to play as that character for a while. Mademoiselle was a villainess building up a sweetheart, but she was on the verge of death. Perhaps that's why Mademoiselle was in Fiona's body in the first place. The lady turned out to be the most suitable character to reveal the character of Gabriella Nashert. Since ancient times, the woman was thin, built herself weak, cried a lot, and pretended to be an angel. She pretended to be innocent. All right, my lady decided she would do it. Miss would smile sweetly and say whatever was expected of her. She would tolerate any surprises, pretend she knew nothing, playing the innocent. The plan was perfect. Mademoiselle plays the character perfectly, frees herself from her shackles, and talks about everything. Madame missed her husband, friends, and comrades very much. The main character really loved Ernst. That's the kind of plot this story needs. There's nothing you can do about it. The protagonist turned to his spouse and informed her that he had a camping trip waiting for him for a few days. Upon arrival at the palace, the mistress will be assigned the East Wing. She will reside there with her maids. The man was cold to the lady. Well, it wouldn't work on the first try, and there was no need to be nice. But the young man hadn't been so aloof before. The look and the voice have become deeper and more serious in these six years. What had caused it? The girl looked at the man as if she were trying to consider the answer, and he noticed the gaze fixed on him and asked if everything was all right. Mademoiselle laughed and said everything was fine, and she herself thought that her hubby must have been worried to tell the lady. My lady smiled and asked why her spouse was so cold, but that was a rather unfortunate question. So Miss would bury herself. The man asked if Fiona did it on purpose then? Madame asked. Shouldn't she have done it? She didn't want to tell the Duke that she had done everything on purpose. No, you shouldn't have. Ernst agreed to the marriage because the princess isn't the smartest girl. If she had been someone a little smarter, someone who could hurt the North, the protagonist wouldn't have agreed to this alliance. As frustrating as it is, the former villain must continue to make a fool of herself. But... The princess turned to her hubby and said that her clothes were terribly uncomfortable. That's right, the lord didn't think of that. Was the lady's dress too tight? Yes, at least she was uncomfortable. The young man said he could have stopped the carriage and called the maids. But no, the girl didn't want to do that. The protagonist hovered over the mister and asked if the duke himself could help loosen her corset. Milady thought that just because she didn't know anything didn't mean she should sit idle. His grace asked to be allowed to stop the carriage. He would mention the problem to the maid. For a moment, Mademoiselle even wished she could. Maybe her husband would recognize her if she looked like Gabriella. But for now, the lady simply accepted the option of calling a maid. It was normal that Ernst didn't recognize her. How was it even possible to recognize a person in another body? He was blinded by hatred and rumors. Given what was happening, the young man could partially be understood. The man was unaware that his current wife's body contained an ex-wife. Plus, he knew it was Princess Fiona of the Forces of the Day family he so despised. Not too much that the gentleman would be living in the East Wing? The East Wing, the building for annoying guests. The place was beautiful, but it was located too far from the main building. Their engagement had been celebrated in the North long ago, but it had been announced that they would not be living as a couple. Let it be Ernst's wish, the lady couldn't just go to that annex. We must quietly pretend Madame knew nothing. Sooner or later the Duke would find out the truth. The commander was approached. The protagonist replied that it seemed to have been a success. His assistant Sebastian replied that he could state this with complete confidence. They did a very good job. The cargo was delivered by the rest of the squad and moved to the ship. That's great work. Transportation. Some of it was necessary for the military issue, but most of it was for the civilians, those who were serving as witnesses in the case of the first prince's overthrow. This has been the original plan since the marriage. Only the most loyal elite are privy to the mission, including Sebastian. He is the one who stole the protagonist's wife and the one who has been searched for six years. It was a way to get rid of the first prince. Mr. drank the coffee and spit it out immediately. His chief assistant never learned how to make it. Sir replied that he was still sure he cooked it better than the lady. By the way, the anniversary of her death is coming up. She will be pleased if her husband leaves a gift on her grave. The man turned to the boy and told him to watch his words. He said he'd made a mistake. And by the way, didn't the Duke say that the princess claimed that everything was fine? 
They need to express their gratitude to her, yes. But Ernst had a hard time accepting it. The aide replied that he himself knew how much everyone respected his wife. Yes, and also, the Lord knew that a fourth princess would not harm the North. This matter had been carefully studied. Princess Fiona, a kind, strong in spirit, but closed off from society. She has no more mental abilities than a child. She has failed to learn even the norms of behavior in high society. The second prince has been bullying her since she was a child. Moreover, the lady suffers from sleepwalking. His lordship had no intention of finding a wife after Gabriella's death. He approved of Princess Fiona because she was not a clever lady. They say she's no smarter than a child. The duke took her as his wife as revenge, but he intended her as a little sister for the rest of his days. Is the girl as the rumors say she is? Commander Dessen was approached and informed that a battle had begun. Sebastian said he would go, and the protagonist would deal with those papers in the meantime. And speaking of privacy, tonight will be the newlyweds' first wedding night, right? Even after ten years, the man reported being tired. In the meantime, we need to close our eyes and prepare for tomorrow. Gabriella, the protagonist, would be disappointed in her spouse after learning that he married for revenge. The young man agreed to this alliance in order to be able to move freely through the territories of the forces of the day. The Lord used the princess to get closer to the first prince. There were other excuses. There aren't enough words to justify it. Six years is a long time. And Mr. still thought of his ex-wife when he closed his eyes. Ernst remembered the corners of her smile, her skin pale with cold, and a soft body that was warm. But except his lordship realized he would never see her again. The man was in terrible pain. After all, that day the protagonist was unable to protect the dearest person to himself. The master sat in the rain for a long time and did not leave her a step. The young man came as soon as he read her letter, but he could not prevent her death. The thought of it plunged him into despair every time. Ernst tried to remember every detail about his wife's death. Every rainy day he visited the place of her death. How the rain sounded that day. How desolate the ground was. How scarlet was the blood that spread beneath the carriage. How cold the villain's body became as she took her last breath. The Lord would never forget her heavy breathing. The Duke promised that those responsible for the murder and those involved in the crime would have their heads stripped off. Mademoiselle apologized and went into the protagonist's room. Afterwards, she asked if Ernst was there. A few minutes ago, my lady thought about how there just couldn't be a romantic first night in a marriage like this. I guess that's normal on a camping trip. Miss thought he did it on purpose, for otherwise they would have had to stay in the same room. No, of course the protagonist was pleased to see the Duke rejecting other women. Madame didn't even know whether to laugh or cry. The girl turned to Stalin. She asked if the maid knew where the Duke was. Well, she would find out now. The villainess looked at her and thought she was quick. This maid at least understood the fact that the lady had saved her life. The lady could see that she wanted to be around and wanted to be on good terms. But it's not like the girl was striving for unwavering fidelity. Still, Fiona managed to sneak in earnest, except the lady didn't like the look on his face. But she still wouldn't leave. The man replied that the princess shouldn't have bothered. The young man seemed to be drinking tea. The girl hoped that she was only to be told that Sebastian had brewed it. Apparently, it was quite bad. Miss wanted to make tea for the main character, but he replied that he didn't need to. The girl asked if she could make tea for herself. The duke said to order the maid to do it. Fiona asked if she could have his tea there. No, tedious to do it in the carriage. But the lady didn't want to drink tea outside. After all, everyone hated the lady. It was the right time for an eyeball attack. The protagonist told her to drink tea and go to bed immediately. Mademoiselle knew her tea. The Duke had noticed this during the Pearl incident, but he just couldn't believe it. Was Miss Mademoiselle so badly treated that she had to make her own tea? No, that's not even what Mr. is curious about. He wonders how a less intelligent princess could make tea so skillfully. And why did he get a warm feeling when his lordship saw the elegance with which she handled the tea pieces? The young man was confused. The protagonist asked if her spouse would like a drink. Yes, my lady was trying. Madame said the tea should be getting cold by now. The duke sipped, and the taste was exactly like the taste of the tea Gabriella used to make that the man missed so much. Mr. liked the tea, and his wife said she preferred it with honey. Did his lordship like honey in his tea? 
Mistress said her cup was already empty, so she had to go now, and she said goodnight to her husband. The protagonist thought about how strange it was. Gabriella liked tea with honey, too. Did all women like it, or was the princess and using some tactic? Why did this girl remind him so much of his former spouse? Perhaps Ernst made it all up and it's just a coincidence, but something his lordship was certainly not wrong about. Perhaps that was the reason the lord continued to interact with her. Maybe instead of putting the princess in the east wing as Mr. had originally planned, should I have kept a close eye on her? Where was this strange feeling coming from? Gabriella, the protagonist, remembered exactly her. She was a respected duchess, often did not laugh, but when she turned and bestowed a smile, the young man could not remain indifferent. In the end, the duke had to break a clause in the contract, which said that the partners in a marriage must not love each other. It was a passionate love. Ernst was distracted by everything about his wife. Soft lips, long neck. The number of nights when his lordship remembered the girl all alone only increased. And on the day the young man finally embraced the mistress, it seemed that the protagonist didn't need anyone but her. And then she was simply taken away. The Duke just wanted to be happy. Who was Princess Fiona? Why was she making Mr. Shiver so much? The next day, the protagonist got up and thought about how she felt like she didn't have a home every day. Everyone ate dinner and looked at Madame with disapproval. By the way, where were the first prince's guards? And the third, too. This is terribly wrong, considering the northern fleet was against them. Well, my lady didn't mind. It's even easier to get around. Wait a minute. What started happening? Did all the soldiers start coughing because they were sick? The princess apologized and turned to the men. She had a problem. The men listened to her attentively. She reported about the tea with honey, which was what the lady drank during a cold. Madame saw them coughing, so she wanted to help. Everyone wanted to reply that the problem was that... Sleepyhead interrupted the young people and said that it was a huge disappointment. Couldn't they even take tea with honey? Did these people even know how tricky it was to make? Precious honey and cinnamon were used for this drink, and there was even lemon added. These ingredients are not easy to get. The protagonist once gave the servant some bling and told them to show it to her if they refused to give her anything. The woman thought about the fact that the brewing process itself was also difficult. She had to stir this potion until she was blue in the face. So the knights decided to try it after all. Oh man, seriously, a princess wouldn't hurt them. Yeah, but, well, well, the first man drank the drink and it was honestly quite tasty. All the men lined up. Sleepyhead couldn't believe that these men didn't even want to try it first. And anyway, didn't they have anything to say? You should be grateful for gifts. The warriors thanked the Fiona. And the girl at this point was sure that her maid would be glad of those words. Also, it seemed that people had stopped coughing, which was good. I wonder what would have happened if the protagonist had behaved this way as Gabriella. The villainess was very indifferent at one time. After she got married, she started thinking about how she could survive. Milady was happy when she gave the Duke her heart. Because of her indecision, she was only able to approach Ernst after many attempts. The lady thought that Mr. would not reciprocate and was afraid that her husband would find out about her sincere feelings. The girl was worried that the young man would eventually become greedy and Miss would lose him. The same thing happened to them. At first, Mademoiselle was afraid to approach the knights because they saw her as a temporary duchess. But Madame knew better than to treat them kindly. She was the Duchess of the Aki, and she should have done what she could to help. Now, the mistress was very sorry, and so far she told all the men that she would bring more tea tomorrow, but not so much because there was not much honey left. The main character decided that she would never do that again. She realized that she had wasted too much time on doubt. And this is... Christian? This is Major Christian Belmo. Madame first saw him when the boy was only 17. He's grown and matured. All the guards for the Lord were special. But five men in particular stood out. Ernst's trusted comrade, Sebastian Dessen, who had also become Gabriella's friend. Christian Belmare, he was a member of the Belmare family, known for their loyalty. After him was Vice Admiral Valken Tortis, aide-de-camp to the Duke. Gain Igus, who always made the villainous smile, and the most daring Bringild Anato. Milady missed them as much as her spouse. The main character sat up to the boy and said hello to him. Honestly, Miss sat there and couldn't believe that this child had grown up so much. 
and now Mr. was older than she was. The Lord turned to Her Highness and told them to stop following them and return to the carriage. It seemed it would be a challenge to make contact with him. The girl turned to Major Belmer. How did the princess know his surname? Sir did not remember telling of such a thing. Yes, Mademoiselle still hoped that they would have time to get acquainted, but she shouldn't have shown her contempt for the commander's new wife so openly. It was not an officer's business. After that, the young man broke the plate with food, it just flew out of his hands. And the former villainess thought about how the reaction was the same as before. It was really fun to pester the knight. It's the only thing that's changed between them. If the man hasn't changed, he will still consider his words. This man wasn't the type to take such things lightly. If Sir saw a threat in the princess, he would tell Ernst and Sebastian, probably just testing her now. The officer was currently pondering whether Fiona posed a danger. Now everyone would be watching her even more closely. But this was exactly what Gabriella's soul had been waiting for. Milady really wanted that Christian to watch her even more. The guy used to follow her everywhere. If Mrs. Plan didn't work, this particular officer might recognize her as the villainous and former wife of the commander. And if she didn't find out, and the protagonist changed his attitude towards the lady, and even if she and Mr. didn't fall in love, it didn't change the fact that it was still the Duchess of X. Everyone up north has their own ocean. The main task is to illuminate it. But hers was still plunged into darkness. Madame's footprints were still on the sand. Mademoiselle looked back and realized how far she had already come. And my lady told herself that it was enough. The next day from the very morning the princess was woken up. So it began, and the lady was told to come out. The powers of the day, the forces of night. Now that the forces were united, rebellion could not be avoided. Domina has truly waited for this. Her Highness asked what happened. And the Gehan in charge of the transportation of provisions reported that if the northern troops and demanded that they immediately share their food supplies, Madame thought they would be the first to leave port and load him on a ship? Is the northern fleet terribly stupid and narcissistic? What, stupid and narcissistic? Was the man even himself? Though the man thought the princess was on the side of the forces of the day and asked if they could give it to her. Mister asked him to listen and told him that he was more than sure that the man didn't care about my lady. The task is to preserve the emperor's provisions. You can't give them away so easily? Did Miss listen to him at all? Well, actually, it was very much expected that Sir would say just that. He wanted the northern soldiers begging for food. If you give them half the food, they won't do anything. The third prince didn't even do business with him. It's a chance. It's a growth opportunity for the emperor's crony. He asked Fiona to come out to talk. Just looking at him from the window wasn't enough. So what is to be done? Mademoiselle replied that the man seemed to have a difficult job to do. What? What was that thought even talking about? The emperor himself has entrusted Gehan with this important task. This is his chance to succeed and strengthen his position. He was his highness's nephew. Why did even her stomach twist it at the sight of her? Was it some kind of trick? Sir turned to Madame and said that she was probably too young to deal with such matters. With all due respect, she was still very young. But maybe this was over the top. But how dare this man even insult her husband's army? Moreover, this crony didn't even dare to mention the emperor's honor. This person seems to think he is a monarch himself. This was the first time the lady had seen such a careless person. Just looking at his highness's nephew makes me sick. In fact, it was better for him to go back to the palace. Mr. didn't understand how Fiona could say such a thing. Sir was going to judge her? Milady didn't even want to see the man's comrades. She seemed about to faint. The lady wanted them all to leave immediately. And the lady herself thought that her brother would be furious if anything happened to her. The lady turned to his assistants and said that she had hoped the employee conversation would be much more pleasant. And they shouldn't be so gentle just because they didn't like someone. Now, the girl looked out into the crowd, and with a glance she picked out the man who was now in charge of moving the provisions. Or didn't he want to? No, of course he did. Of course he did. He was much better than their current commander. The nephew said that no one dared stand in his way. He was the emperor's crony. But had he even heard what the princess had said? Now the other man was in charge. The main character thought that everything was fine and going according to plan. For a couple of days, she handed out tea and honey and watched people and their relationships, figuring out who hated who. After finding opponents, and this is the result. Well, 
that was just a great move on the part of the shallow princess, in their opinion. At this point, Sebastian approached the lady from behind and said there was a lot of interest. The officer introduced himself and indicated that he could help the lady sort out the mess. Milady was glad to see him and replied that the young man could do what he wanted. I wonder how long it had been since he had even looked at the commander's consort. Now the lady asked her to forgive her. In fact, the princess should not have witnessed such a spectacle. The girl turned to Ernst and said that she was fine and the soldiers had protected her. It seems the mister was already aware that his soldiers had come immediately to the rescue as soon as the conflict with the Gehan began. In the meantime, the mister wanted his wife to follow him. But the girl took him by his clothes and told him she wouldn't move until one man left. To improve the relationship with the main character, who didn't even say her name, you have to show which side Fiona was on. And for that, one must get rid of the powers of the day without a drop of regret. The emperor's nephew said there was a common misunderstanding. How could they have chosen his cousin? In the next moment, the duke covered his wife with himself and stuck a sword into the insolent man's hand and then ordered him to listen attentively. Now he was no longer in charge of provisions, all the workers would be eliminated. It was a great way to keep the enemy in his place, but you shouldn't have done anything. Was that clear to everyone? After that, Ernst threw away his weapon and took his spouse by the waist. A perfect line. No need to do anything. The Lord himself didn't want his wife to do anything. It was easy to understand, but Sonia swooped down on that jerk, or rather, the emperor's crony. He must return the princess's hairpin immediately. No man in the world would trade an emerald hairpin for a jar of honey. Oh my goodness, everyone's starting to discuss. What's with the hairpin? A jar of honey for a piece of jewelry? The lady couldn't believe it. The maid said that Fiona asked to make tea with honey for the soldiers. She asked for honey, and that idiot Gehan said he wouldn't just give it to her. And the princess pulled out an emerald hairpin. Uh, so they've been drinking tea and honey all this time. The men just couldn't believe it. It was very expensive after all. It was surprising that Her Highness used jewelry. It was a very sensitive gesture. The protagonist was told that a man who had been disrespectful to her had been sentenced to death. The Duke said he had heard that his wife gave tea with honey to soldiers who had caught cold. The gentleman was very grateful. But if my lady needed anything, she should ask her spouse. That was true, but Fiona just didn't want to alarm him. His wife never bothered him. Okay. But the young man should realize that Gabriella was standing before him, just in a different guise. The lady mentally asked to recognize her. But so far, she couldn't say anything. Half. That's how many soldiers the commander expelled. And that's just the ones the emperor sent away personally. Circumstances are obviously on the side of the night force. Surprisingly, their soldiers seemed to favor the princess. Sebastian agreed and said that the chiefs often took advantage of their position to control the weakest. On the other hand, wasn't it refreshing, difficult to honey tea? The aide is also, what is he? The duke reported that this person seems to have changed for the better as well. Yes, although, no, 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 it's not like that at all. Everyone was told to leave. The princess was tired, and Sebastian said that the officers gathered because the princess wouldn't leave the carriage. Unlike the third prince, Fiona was very nice to the regular knights. Sonia was informed that these people were actually going to meet with an investigation team sent by the royal family, and the protagonist was supposed to join them. Historically, the royal family and the household of the Duke of X have maintained an uneasy environment. Despite the uneasy relationship, the parties tried to maintain a balance, but the lands of night lacked provisions in any case. However, this side had a lot of magic oil. Magic oil was the basis of the magician's research. It was found at the bottom of the ocean of the Duchy of X. If we could settle the matter with an exchange, it wouldn't be so difficult. Except, unfortunately, the Ekases weren't just short on provisions. A terrifying night sickness. A frightening sight that made the eyes flutter. And pupils constrict until they disappeared altogether. It was a disease unique to the North Sea. Incurable. It was dangerous to people of all ages. Only gunpowder could stop its progress. The main ingredient was a brightly colored herb. She only grew up in the south in the Temple of Valeret. All this time they were signing a contract favorable to the royal family. But thanks to this marriage, the situation has fundamentally changed. Moreover, the study of the disease, 
though on the condition that Princess Fiona will personally lead the squad. Thanks to the protagonist, the situation has changed drastically. Food supplies, bright grass, experts, and a research squad, all of which seemed unlikely until now. With such a radical change in conditions, the North was clearly on the plus side. Also, when a child was born, the Union bore fruit, and 500 tons of bright grass were given as congratulations, a joint pastime at least once a week. The young men could accept the provisions the royal family insisted on, but they still wouldn't have enough. After all, the protagonist was not going to accept anyone else around but the dead Gabriella. No one but her. Even if the ex-wife isn't around, the smell of Fiona, could it be so familiar? It was a strange smell, even kind of annoying. Milady thought about what Ernst had asked to walk. I wonder what the matter was. Did the man ask if his spouse knew about the night sickness? Yes. A little later, Mr. would introduce the girl to the research team. Madame will become the leader of a squad to research the disease. The duchy has been trying to find a cure for the disease for a long time, but nothing has worked. Therefore, they are very excited about the opportunity to bring together experts from different fields. Therefore, the main character said that if his spouse did not like something, he would personally fix it, and asked the main thing was not to expel anyone. The lady agreed and asked the gentleman to get up quickly. The Duke doesn't need to take it personally. It's been so long since Gabriella's death and her former current spouse hasn't changed at all. He is willing to compromise his own pride for the greater good, a true leader who will do anything for the duchy. A little inclination certainly doesn't hurt him. He's exactly what the lady once envisioned her spouse to be in the future, and that future has arrived. And the lady said she didn't intend to exercise anyone. There were many important people in the duchy. Now X says is her home. Milady turned to her husband and suggested that together they make people happy. The next moment something happened and the girl leaned over. What was wrong? The gentleman stood there and didn't understand what this feeling was? And then she just fell to the ground. The heat, the pain, the flames burning underfoot. Gabby, is this the Duchess's bedroom in Castle X? Had they gotten to the duchy yet? Perhaps they were just traveling very fast, but the protagonist was nearby. He said his wife woke up early. Mademoiselle replied that her eyes just opened on their own. They were to board the ship. Her lips moved of their own accord, and my lady said if her hubby forgot, he would be punished. The young man replied that the Duchess was testing his patience. Ah, she had pink hair, but the gentleman accurately called the Princess Gabby. She is not Fiona? A sleepy-eyed girl sat beside the mistress and said that she was finally awake. The maid said that the girl had no idea how frightened she was. The Duke personally carried her to her chambers. Mademoiselle asked if they had sailed yet. Not yet, for the wind was picking up, so they would have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, that's right, the servants will go and tell the master that his wife is awake. She was still in the captain's cabin. Of course, it was the best room on the ship. Of course, Ernst had to move the sick princess to the best quarters. It's seven o'clock. It's not that late, so we should get up and go meet the research team. The lady's husband came into the room and announced that he had brought the doctor. The lady definitely needed to be examined. Wow, old Lorenzo was still alive. He is a specialist who has long held the position of physician in a duchy where there were not many, one of his most loyal cronies. It was Lorenzo. The old man said that if Fiona was okay with it, he would do the inspection. And of course, the lady didn't mind. I wonder what it was. The vision was so vivid, it didn't seem like an illusion. Ernst called her Gabby, which was the nickname of the late Gabriella. But the girl was in Fiona's body. The thought that it was just a dream was wrenching, but my lady knew for a fact that this was Fiona's world. They were images that sometimes suddenly fell on my head, and the pain was so sharp that it was like being burned alive, and the princess couldn't even tell anyone about it. Because no one would believe it. And while the lady was thinking about it, the doctor reported that there were no serious problems with her. The lady was probably uncomfortable with the long trip. That's how. Everyone thought it was all right, though no man faints after a trip up north. In the meantime, Miss must rest. The mistress tried to stop her spouse and said, what about the illness research? She was already fine and wanted to see the team. The Duke replied that they would leave that for tomorrow morning. Mademoiselle did not know whether it was a mirage or a dream, but she hoped very much that it was her future. Ernest recognized her and even smiled. 
they still had a long way to go. The young man looked out at the ocean and thought about how he was just going crazy. The heat, the flames, the pain, it was fear sealed in his heart. Old Lorenzo said it was because of his illness. But what troubled the man was that Fiona looked an awful lot like his ex-wife. Yes, the Duke knew they were two different people. The girl approached Ernst and asked if the young man had already eaten. Well, the protagonist did not sit still. The man said that he told his wife to rest. Mademoiselle replied that she would take a break next to the mister and offered to eat together. The gentleman took a sandwich, but at the same time said that he had asked the chief to bring him his dinner. But the... As the protagonist took a bite, he thought about the fact that these sandwiches tasted exactly like the ones his late wife used to make. Also, my lady said she asked the chef to cook something. So that's what it was. Ernst turned away, and my lady asked if he was all right. The girl afterwards said this phrase, Don't be caught by the mercilessness of the waves. The moon goddess is watching you. Was it really the song of the Nereid nymph? But why was the princess singing the sailor's song? Remember the day you sent your love into the dark blue waters? That tune. Hold on, don't cry. The man just didn't want my lady to stop singing. The sharp waves of today will shelter us tomorrow. At this point, the young man felt at peace. At that moment, the soldiers didn't understand why they felt so sad. So they asked Fiona if she knew any other songs. Yes, and offered to sing them together. We sing together, clutching each other by the shoulders, in the name of those who died before all, and waited as one to reach the moon. How is that even possible? No matter how much people try to pretend, when tired, everything is noticeable. But the protagonist, her sincerity, no matter how you looked at it, made one admire, who doubted, be ashamed of it. Why? I mean, just why did his lordship keep thinking of Gabriella when he looked at his current wife, Fiona? Always wanted to know. No. Mister should find out right this second. He hadn't forgotten the villain, even after her death. She appeared in his memories, both in his dreams and in reality. Lorenzo could not look at the commander in such a state and prescribed medication. After that, the protagonist began to pretend that everything was fine, but still could not forget his first and only love. Why? That must be why the Lord couldn't take his eyes off the princess, who reminded him so much of Gabriella. The young man tried to ignore her, but his lordship just couldn't take it anymore. He must find out. Why did she remind him so much of his late wife? The girl sat at the table and chatted. She was glad that they were imperial ambassadors. At first, it was scary that they would be strangers. It was good that everything was all right. Mademoiselle asked if it turned out that not everyone was able to come. Yes, Jurian could not come because of fear of the sea. Jurian Nibelungen, the magician. One mister answered, yes, it is a wizard. But he wasn't sure if they could use his skills. The man didn't seem to believe in magic. Well. That's how many people in the empire felt about magic. The lady personally believed in the existence of magic because the main character of the story is a wizard. A woman approached the princess and informed her that they planned to go to the lab when they arrived in port. They would report on the results of the research and the budget for three months. That was all Dr. Trisha Fabier talking. She's the current leader of the research team. She realized that the girl wouldn't understand the report completely, but she wanted to share it anyway. Fiona was pleased and replied that she would try very hard to help with the research. Also, it looked like they would be arriving at the site soon. But where did the main character go? Madame stood looking out to sea. Her husband announced that they had finally arrived, and she added that they were going home. Well, the journey from the harbor to the mansion was not a short one. Owen the butler came out to meet the newlyweds and said it was a pleasure to meet them. The lady was also very happy and wanted to introduce herself as an intelligent person. But then she remembered that she had to play dumb. So pretending to hesitate, she said her name and hugged the old man. The butler replied that he saw that the new mistress of the house was charming and added that Betty would take her to her chambers. The old woman asked if the duchess was tired from the journey. She said she had prepared a warm bath for her. She could also be called Grandma Betty. The lady asked her grandmother to take care of her. The protagonist announced that he would already be going on vacation. Mademoiselle told Betty that it was already time to go. The mistress was taking a bath. How was the water temperature for her? The girl turned to Sonia and told her to call her Duchess Exes. After all, Princess is her birth title. 
The old woman had a strange look on her face. She probably couldn't believe that Fiona, who had been a princess all her life, could say something like that. The main character said that she had already forgotten about the imperial palace. After her bath, Madame went out on the balcony, and the fresh smell of the sea immediately hit her nose. She was not in the Duchess's chambers, but she was glad her husband had not sent her to the East Wing. Since the young man let her stay there, it turns out he was beginning to open up to his spouse little by little? Was the girl asked if she was uncomfortable after meeting His Excellency? No. Betty said it may not have been very noticeable, but the commander was a very kind man. The woman was sure the new owner would like them. The protagonist was thinking that it would be glorious to act on his own, but that he would probably have to sleep in the same room for at least a week. So Ernst turned to Madame and said that he would like to discuss something. He had two questions for his new spouse. The first. The Duke knew that the families of the day lived in separate rooms to preserve the privacy of the spouses. If Madame wanted to have a lover, it would be easier that way. The princess was from a family of the powers of the day, so she must be used to this. Milady asked, what was her hubby trying to say with that? The man continued and reported that the families of the night lived with their other half in the same room. If the newlyweds were going to stick to this rule, the lady should not bring anyone else. Was Fiona in agreement? Of course, it didn't matter to her at all. What? What's that reaction from mistress? She wanted to share a room. To be honest, it was rather strange. Also, the protagonist was chewing on the second question. The second question also concerned the guests of the mansion. There's a girl named Charlotte Saint-Tran. She will be 11 years old this year. The Saintry family, a loyal family of the same rank as the Belmare. There was a daughter in their family. Three years ago, there was a major battle. The Duke fought alongside the Earl of Saint-Tran. But alas, the man died. He died trying to protect the protagonist. The Countess witnessed it and asked Ernst to take care of his daughter. The fight ended in a bitter victory. After that, Charlotte became his weakness. Did the protagonist now realize what her hubby was getting at? His daughter had a neglected night sickness, and since the gentleman was in great debt, he let her stay there. Of course, the Duke realized that it was a selfish request, but still. He would like to make this girl a little sister and keep her at the mansion. The girl agreed, and it seems she will have a beautiful little sister. The princess said she didn't think adopting Charlotte would be that difficult, but she had a condition. She wanted to do it together with her spouse. Madame wanted to get married and do it together. The protagonist proposed an arranged marriage. The marriage contract, Ernst thought about the fact that Her Highness had behaved unpredictably before, but Mademoiselle said there would be only four conditions. First, the contract would be valid for five years. During that time, they must pretend that they loved each other. Second, Madame hoped that they would try what they called love. The third condition was that the young people would respect each other as partners and solve all problems by talking. And lastly, if after five years someone didn't want a divorce, they could renew the contract at any time. How did the mister feel about that? The last minutes of her life were full of regrets. The girl thought about how she should have tried to get closer. Why had she kept her feelings so hidden? That was what the lady regretted most of all. Mademoiselle had no intention of wasting any more of her time. Milady just wanted her lover to realize that Gabrielle was standing in front of him. One day in the future, they won't look at each other from afar. They would hug and talk for days on end. Mister replied that he didn't know how to pretend, and he wasn't sure the first condition could be fulfilled. He didn't think he could love a princess. But the main character wasn't treated well, so he would try to avoid rumors about his unhappy life. Well, that was quite enough. Honestly, Mademoiselle loved her spouse much more than she loved herself. Even if he forgot Gabriella, even if their love did not burn. She needed the Duke, and she did not want there to be enmity between them. If only the mistress could look at his radiant smile again. But for now, His Excellency was simply saying that it was late and time for bed. Still, it should be all right now. Madame was already awake and two maids came to see her. Sonia and Hazel, it can't be. It was the maid's granddaughter? How did my lady know that? The last time the villainess saw this girl, she was 12 years old. The girl has grown up a lot. And now she will be a lady's maid. While Her Highness asked what was the matter with Ernst. When the girl awoke, he was not in the room. The maid replied that she had heard, the Duke left for the port of Moran at 6 o'clock in the morning. 
as expected of the protagonist. He performed all the duties of a duke without a break, but his wife also just could not sit in one place. All the servants greeted the Fiona. The lady was also pleased with the greeting. The girl thought about how there were times when she had heard greetings all morning. It made her heart beat more often. And by the way, what about this child? Charlotte stepped forward and greeted the lady. Her bottomless eyes, empty pupils, she had many symptoms of night sickness. The princess said that she was glad to meet and said that she was Fiona Eckes, but that she could just call her sister. Also, the girl wanted to give a gift to the new mistress of the house. This scarf she knitted herself. Wow! The little girl said that when she heard her sister was coming, she decided to give her a present. It's cold outside after all. Mistress replied that it was straight up fall nice. It was very warm. At that moment, a woman ran up to Charlotte and asked if she was all right. Was she hurt? Yes, she was all right. It was Miss Bellin, and she did not say hello to the lady at once, for she was afraid for the girl. Her name was Rachel Ballon, and she was Charlotte's tutor. The lady wasn't feeling well. The worker didn't call the main character a lady, nor did she call the girl Miss. Well, it was their first meeting. Well, the protagonist said that if Rachel ran around the hallways like that, she would definitely hurt herself. Also, she could no longer say hello in the morning, otherwise her student would learn bad manners. The girl replied that she just wasn't feeling well today. Was the princess mad at her? Was the girl playing the victim? There's no such thing. It was just the first time the Duchess of Exes had seen a nobleman running around the corridor so frivolously. How did the lady manage to run when the protagonist is in such a state? It's hard for her to even move. It was just amazing. Well, the greeting didn't happen because of the conflict, so they could say hello formally. First of all, Her Highness was glad that Rachel was on time. Beginning from today, they would greet at the same time. Fiona wouldn't just suspend anyone, so the servants didn't have to worry. Mademoiselle wanted to make friends with everyone who worked in the mansion. There would be no servants for the forces of the day, but no one dared offend the sleepy maid. Also, the main character had good news. From now on, Charlotte would be a little princess. The conversation was over. From this day, the girl should be perceived as the younger sister of the Duke. After this phrase, everyone started to greet the young lady. Afterward, the girl asked the educator, what was she staring at? What, not even bowing in front of the student? All right, Miss Bellin, from now on, Charlotte was only allowed to be addressed as Miss. What? The teacher was told the princess was an idiot. Was there such a thing as an idiot? The lady was the only noble in the mansion, and she thought she'd be with the duke someday. That's why she decided to become a tutor. What did the powers of the day even allow themselves? The educator turned to the duke and wanted to take his hand to say something. At that moment, Sebastian came in and brought something. Miss didn't realize what the jerk was holding in his hands. Meanwhile, she told the main character that she heard that Charlotte was going to be his sister. What? Was that announced before the official announcement? So it was revealed before the official document was published. The princess blurted it out? Ha ha, Rachel said she was very impatient. Mademoiselle had said hello to everyone since morning, but it was the right moment to humiliate the Duchess. The girl said that this was exactly what the powers of the day were like. The people of the day simply couldn't stand those with night sickness. If the girl got hurt because of the mistress, the teacher would... The lady said she was her tutor and was worried. Also, Miss Bellin was now supposed to call her student lady. The princess didn't mention that? The man said that this marriage was a matter both public and private, so the matter did not concern the ordinary educator. His Excellency hoped he would no longer be disturbed on such matters. The princess, the princess definitely used magic and misled everyone. We need to find out the truth and reveal it to everyone. Miss heard that there was another member of the royal family in the West Wing. Is his name Johannes? Madame turned to the deacon and asked how much the change of heart had cost. The butler said he had dreamed of it for a long time. It must be very expensive. It was about 10,000 perron, or about 4,400,001. It wasn't cheap enough. The main problem is that money only moved within the duchy. Currency may well have figured in trade matters. But there was a reason why attracting foreign merchants was not so easy. It was the polar night. The dark days starting in the fall ended in late spring. The sun didn't rise for almost half the year. That's why merchants shunned the duchy. 
Mademoiselle told the butler that it would be great if the Duchy of Exes became a tourist destination. A tourist destination? The man immediately remembered Gabriella saying that of course people of the forces of the day had never seen the polar night. Hadn't they wondered? The girl said she had never seen a polar night before. Surely others would be interested in seeing it. The main character spoke in the words of the villain. Madame thought that in her past life she had no ties to the powers of the day, so she stopped looking for a way to earn money. But here was Princess Fiona, possessed an incredible amount of advantages. The lady said she had an idea, and then she just left. The butler struggled with the feeling that it was as if they already knew the lady. Milady spent a lot of time looking around the castle and didn't even notice that it was time for dinner. Charlotte was happy to see her new little sister. The husband asked how the princess was enjoying her first day at the duchy. Madame replied that it was wonderful. Yes, and she was really very happy because she had visited all the places from her memories. Wait a minute. The protagonist pulled back the chair for his wife to lie down on. This was her home now. The servants pretended not to observe the couple. But Ernst had just greatly elevated the status of his spouse. After all, that's the way it should be. The conditions, mister. And yet, the heart of the protagonist began to beat more often with her lover. It was thanks to this man that the lady felt good. Mademoiselle asked her newborn little sister what she wanted to be when she grew up. The girl really wanted to be an artist. An artist who did not paint with his eyes, but with his heart. Really, Fiona was really hoping to see more of Mrs. Paintings. At this point, even the Duke asked if Charlotte would show him these works of art. Yes, but they were both very busy. The newlyweds replied that they would be around and the girl could come to them any time. Shall we give her a brooch? If the young lady wears it on her chest, she will be allowed into any office. It would be better to warn the guards about it at once. Yes, that was a great idea. The little girl replied that she would think about it. It's just that the girl didn't want to alarm the young people very much. The protagonist was upset. But she immediately asked her husband how the third prince's inspection of the West Wing had gone. The man replied that he had received several extremely tedious reports and it seemed that his wife's brother didn't want to go out and just sat in his room for days. How long was he even going to stay in the duchy? The young man answered that, if we reasoned from rumors, it was about a month. That was quite a long time. Mademoiselle thought of Ernst going to his office immediately after dinner, and she didn't want to say goodbye to him. So she offered her lover a drink. The princess offered to raise her glass to the Count and Countess of saint Trin, and in return, received a smile from the Duke. Also, the man noticed that Fiona didn't seem to like cucumbers. Yes, my lady didn't like them. Surprisingly, the last duchess didn't like them either. And neither did Ernst. What a coincidence, that's for sure. Mr. asked if my lady would choose a brooch. She could choose any brooch. His Excellency was informed that his wife had not taken very many of her things with her. But it wasn't worth it. The lady really didn't think it wasn't worth spending money on it. And it was much better to invest in a mansion. The protagonist replied to his wife that if her answer was based on saving money, then one could take it easy. There would be enough money for the contribution. Contribution? What did that mean? The Imperial Palace paid them about 200 coins a month. 200 coins, considering that the Imperial family spent about 700 coins a month, it wasn't that much. You could change the tiles or curtains with that money. But since the villain was in the body of a princess, one must take advantage of one's position. The Duke said he would like to ask for help. It was Charlotte's middle name, but Mr. didn't even know if it fit. Ah, uh, Charlotte, did she write that herself? How about Charlotte X? That sounded really good. So the decision was made very quickly. By the way, my lady reported that the butler said there was somewhere she shouldn't go. Will Ernst tell me what that place is? The protagonist was allowed to go everywhere. But the young man hoped that the girl would not go into the underground prison and the bedroom of the former duchess. The place wasn't for everyone, so his lordship really hoped his current consort wouldn't do it. Miss asked if it was okay to go there once. She wanted to know what the past duchess was like. Mademoiselle came in and didn't understand why nothing had changed in six years. It was as if time had stood still in this place. The duke said it hadn't been cleaned in a long time, so the dust might have settled. But that was a lie. The room looked untidy at first but it was perfectly clean. The girl was told that no one could go in there. Her husband was probably the one who was cleaning it up. The man said he was aware that he should have sorted it out before the new marriage, but just couldn't do it. 
Madame simply could not believe that the Duke had done nothing. It turns out, Miss asked, why didn't Ernst do anything? It's just that he still loved his ex-wife. Mr. still loved her, had not forgotten her. Mistress was sure that after a while, Gabriella would be forgotten, that her husband would never look at her again. So the lady wondered if the feeling was mutual. The protagonist still remembered those sleepless nights when she put on paper the feeling she simply could not express. She wrote a tear-soaked letter that she would never send. She wrote to her dear Ernst, if the lady had only known of his feelings, the relationship between them would have turned out differently. At this point, the lady started taking books from the bookshelf. What on earth was she doing? There were letters in the book, but where were they coming from? On lonely nights, the princess thought about how much she loved this man, crying and pouring out her soul on paper. It was late, but the girl wanted to tell about the strength of her feelings and how lonely she felt. Mademoiselle put her hand on the gentleman's, which evidently did not please Mr., and he said that Fiona had better go to her chambers. She replied that they would see each other again. Ah, uh, that wasn't easy. The girl said she was fine, but it seems as if she was hurt by the confession. Gabriella. His Excellency didn't think their relationship would end so soon. The lady was very impulsive. It was strange that the two had similar preferences. As soon as the princess entered the late villain's room, she immediately found the hidden letters. Isn't that a lot of coincidences? Could his beloved have been reborn as a Fiona? The Duke had some crazy thoughts. I wish they'd died together that day. The Lord must have made it up because he was bored. His Excellency didn't understand why he was so uncomfortable. Why he wanted to be kind to his wife, he had no idea. The only thing the protagonist knew for sure was that Gabriella was the only woman Ernst truly loved. And he would never replace her. But still, it was an unbearable pain.